who are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. 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 Praise God for that redemption. Amen. Thank God for that new life He has given us. Thank yes. God for the blood He has shed on the yes. cross. Yes. And thank God for His grace, His mighty grace, and His yes. tender mercy thank love. Lord. We have a lot to be thankful. Amen. 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 Sometimes we let little things go when we should be praising God. Sometimes when life is the hardest, praise God. God knows you're hurt, and he's not going to let you suffer just through a season to be able to teach you how to be closer to him. Amen. It's amazing what God can teach you if you would just sit still long enough. Amen. And that's the teaching that I believe Jesus gave Simon when he had those nets and had been casting those nets all night long. All y'all fishermen out here, you know how it is to go out there in them hot June days and yeah. you go out there and fish all night. You done got tired, you're dirty, and you can barely keep your eyes open. And I got to thinking about how Jesus can uh, in a mean and just come in your life and change your life in a split second. Uh -huh. You think about those days when you go fishing. Some days you don't catch nothing. Some days you catch a lot. But you go because you enjoy going. And that's life. We keep going because we love Jesus. And we know that he is doing a mighty work in our lives. So we enjoy living this life that he has gave us. Because he has made a way through the cross at Calvary. Praise God for his, his hurt, his pain. But thank God for his glory here today. That he has given you and I today. He has given us everlasting life forever and ever with him. Where we won't hurt anymore, we won't be in pain. That word COVID will be gone. Depression will be no such a thing. A lame man will be healed. Blind man will see. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. I hope that does somebody some good today to just give you hope. Amen. To give you peace in your heart that you haven't had. That, that you will understand today that it's not about what we can do in life, but it's about what we can get out of life. And that's through Jesus Christ. That's right. We're going to go on and get into this message today. I want to thank Buddy for stepping up and doing the sound booth. And if he had to been here today, then we would be doing this old school, straight from mouth to your ear, right? Amen. But God would have blessed it. But I do thank God for Amen. him stepping up and being able to give us that today. I thank God for the piano. I thank God for everything he has done and doing and will do at Grace Ministries. Amen. Amen. I'm so, I'm so proud to be a part of this ministry. I'm so proud to be able to serve with you, God's people, and to get to know you and to fellowship and just watch God work in our lives. God is so good, but sometimes we just, we just don't see the light sometimes because we let the world uh, blind us. We let Satan fool us. We let him oppress us and get us down, and we forget who our creator is. We forget who the most high is, the most important in our life. See, sometimes God will, will put you on a spot in your life to where you will have to lay down and look up and see that he is God. It is not a good feeling. It's not a good place to be, but thank God for his redemption. Thank God, thank God for his love and kind of mercy that he has, his thank grace God. that he saw fit to save you and I. To keep us out of that place called hell. But he gave us new life with him forever. Forever and ever. This story right here, I really love it because it really shows me how teachable we can be through Christ. And if we will be obedient to Christ and listen and, and just do what he says, amen. You might sit here today and say, well, how can I do what he says? I don't hear him, but here's the thing. If you're a child of God here today, you have the Holy Spirit that's living and dwelling in your body today. That's what gives you that emotions of love. That's what spreads the love from Christ from your head to your toes. That's what convicts you, convicts you when you want to do wrong, but the Holy Spirit is saying, do right. So we need to learn to depend on the Holy Spirit in everything we do in our life. And to be guided by the Holy Spirit and, and, and want to be teachable here today. And that's exactly what Jesus was doing. 
he had gone to the seashore and he was getting ready to set his pulpit up in Simon's boat because he was getting ready to teach the multitude a valuable lesson. And that's when he says to do something, you do it and you will see a miracle in your life. Come on now, See, a lot of us are not listening closely for that miracle that Christ wants to give us today. A lot of us wouldn't be here today sitting where we are sitting at this appointed time if we had a disobeyed uh, Christ's word years ago. Amen. Or what if that person come and prayed with you and, and, and gave that sinner's prayer to you and you gave your life to Christ? But what if you decided not to do that? Where would you be at today if it wasn't for Christ? You will be exactly where you were. You will be fighting your own battles and living your own life and trying to do everything for yourself. You will have a, uh, a deep heart and you can't feel. There's no love. There's no want. There's no peace. There's no hope because you're searching and you're trying to find other ways to make yourself happy other than Christ. And I think about the word of addiction today. Alcohol today, sin. I think about those things that I was living in in my past. But I thought about, like Simon, Jesus had knocked on my door and knocked on my door and says, you need to leave these drugs alone. You need to let me in your heart and you need to sh let me show you what life is today. Amen. 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 And I think about what would it be like today if I hadn't uh, followed Christ. What, if I hadn't made that decision to listen to Christ, to let him come in my heart, to teach me and to, to uh, love me and to push me on, where would I be at today? I would be back in my addiction or I would be dead through addiction. Amen. Right. Amen. So I'm telling anybody here today, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you went through last year or what today, but I know Christ knows. And if he is telling you to do something today, follow his leadership and do it. Right. Because it's a reason that he is convicting your heart. It's a reason that he wants you to do what he says because yeah. he wants to use you. He wants to be able to depend on you to go out and use your testimony to share with other people that's in the same boat that you were in. So that you can get them out of that boat of brokenness, addiction, sin, and get in a boat of righteousness with Jesus Christ. Amen. And I thank God today that, that he gives us a chance. A second, third, fourth, fifth chance here today. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God on that. Yeah. So let's go on and get started here. And it's going to be Luke. And it's going to start. It'll be chapter 5. And we're going to do verses 1 through 11. And this is going to be a powerful message. Not that I'm giving it. But the Holy Spirit is going to share this with your heart today. Amen. And he's going he's gonna to open your mind up to be teachable here today, to listen, to feel him, to let him guide you. So let's go on and get this started today. So it was that the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two boats standing by the, the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them, and were washing their nets. You remember what I said, how hard and how the hot, sweating job that is? If you're here today and if you've never seen a casting net, the standard nets we have today when we go fishing in today's time will be a three foot, four foot, six foot, all the way up to 12 foot. And then you have the big commercial ones that stretch out. But I'm telling you here today as a fisherman, that I have thrown them nets, and it's, and it's very strenuous on your arms, your body. You get tired, and a lot of times you cast, and you cast, and you cast, and you don't bring up nothing. And you get so tired that you have to sit down and rest for a while. So as I'm reading this right here, and I'm, I'm listening, and I'm, I'm meditating on what, what Christ wants me to know here today, it comes to me that even when we are tired here today and we're wore out, Christ can strengthen us and give us more than we ever, ever wanted. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I want to read two again. And saw two boats standing by the lake, yes. but the fishermen had gone from them uh -huh. and were washing their nets. Come on, man. Now listen to verse 3 here. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down 
and taught the multitude from the boat. You remember a while ago when I said Jesus had used this boat for a pulpit? He is getting ready to do a mighty te uh, teaching to the multitude of the people. But he was going to use Simon as the example of someone who didn't uh, believe in what they could do. Or and even Simon's getting ready to say, well, we have, we have threw our nets and we have worked hard all night. It's no fish out here. Do we want to pull a fish up and have them in our boat? But Jesus is getting ready to show him exactly what he may be wanting to show somebody here today. Uh -huh. And go on and listen to this real good today. Come on, Come on. Then he got into one of the boats, mm -hmm. which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. When he had, stu when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out the deep. And let down your nets for a catch. But listen right here. Simon is getting ready to kind of like second judge what, what Jesus is trying to say. Mm -hmm. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So at this time, it's pretty much showing you that he respected uh, Jesus. And he was going to do what Jesus said to do. But can you kind of uh, get the feeling here that he was a little bit kind of doubting, you know, when he said that, well, we, have, we were told we have through all night. He's trying to tell Jesus there's no need to, to go out to the deep. We have already tried everywhere and caught nothing. But Jesus is setting an example here. He is getting ready to make Simon teachable here today. And he's getting ready to show him what will happen if you would just pay attention, sit still, and listen, amen? amen. And, and this is going to be our problem today. I'm not going to finger point today. I just point it back at me. Sometimes in my life today, if I wasn't stubborn or thought I knew it all, then if I would only just listen to Christ, I would be in a much better place and a lot more usable than I am now. But I want to argue with Jesus and I want to fight with him and I want to say, I don't feel like doing it today. And Jesus is saying, do it anyway. I want to show you it's a purpose behind this command. It's a purpose I want to show you in life that you can use to, to let somebody have salvation through me. But if you don't do what Jesus says, how can you even, even get to the point of where you're usable for Christ? So we have to really listen today. We have to really pay attention. This message may be for you, the very one that's here today. Amen. It may be for me today. Maybe I'm preaching today, but maybe Christ meant this message to reflect back on me and to change my heart and do what he says. Come on now, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, mm -hmm. and their net was breaking. Amen? Amen. Now, when you get a net to breaking like breaking point, that is a big ball of fish. And you're getting ready to hear another piece right here where it's getting ready to talk about the ship or the boat was about to sink, praise God. I want you to know here today that if you are obedient to God, you will see abundance in your life. You will see things that you've never seen in your life because you will want to be taught by Christ. You will want to use your life to obey Him and please Him. And He's going to reward you for that. Amen? There's so many things in this earth that we want and we value and we, we put up on a pedestal. But maybe Christ is saying, get rid of all that mess. You don't need that mess in your life. You can't bring it with you to heaven. You might as well get rid of it now. Don't be attached to it. A lot of the problems are our attitudes that we're attached to. We're so used to fighting our battles to get what we want, but we, will, but we, we always forget that Christ is the one who gives us what we need. Amen. Because he is able and willing to do so. Verse 8 goes on to say, When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Amen. Don't we feel unrighteous when we see Christ lift us up and deliver us from something? Amen. 
We feel like we are unworthy to receive the blessing because we have brought so much reproach on him and that, that we're seeing a, 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 a merciful love or act to take place in our lives where we have fought against Christ and gone against Christ. We have lived our life like we want to live it, amen, but we have found that he loves us over all of that. And so we break ourselves down to him and we, we live out humility. We live out the, the pain that we have gone through because he has picked us up and showed us a better life. Amen. If he is calling you today to cast your net in a different area, cast your net. Keep being obedient to him. Keep following him because he will not lead you in the wrong direction. Amen. We lead ourselves in the wrong direction. We set up our failures in life because we're not willing to make a change in our life. We still want to please ourselves, the flesh. We still want to do what feels good to us, and we don't want to step out and, and do something different in our lives. But Christ is different. He is the only way. It's no way to the Father but through Christ. I want you to know that today. It's one way. But he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John and the sons of Zebedee who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From, how, from now on you will catch men. Amen? Amen. I mean, I want to share a little bit of my life where I got addicted to drugs and I I felt like I was bound and destroyed, and I felt like my hope was gone and my life was shattered. Depression sunk in deep in my life, and I got to where I didn't want to live anymore. I didn't want to do anything anymore. I had forgot how to love anybody or love myself. But Jesus come to me one day, and he says, I know you're hurting. I know you're in pain. I know you're broken through addiction. But if you would just do what I say and give your heart to me, I will change you for the rest of your life. Amen. 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 Have you been in that predicament? Yes. Has Jesus Christ come to you and say, do what I say, I will change your life forever. Yes. Trust me, if you bear down to Christ and you surrender your life, like Simon surrendered himself to Jesus and listened to him and obeyed him and he threw that net? Do you realize that this wouldn't even be in the Bible if they hadn't have done what Jesus said? Jesus made them to be fishermen of men. What is all the fish in the ocean but one soul that gets led to Christ? Amen. Ain't that the most important thing? Amen. Amen. That God can use you to grab one person out here that's dying and going to that place called hell. Yes. Don't you want to be teachable for that reason and, yes. and surrender your life and, and, and go through that hum humility that it takes to follow Christ? Yes, sir. Amen. It takes a whole lot of humble pie to follow Christ because you have to give up all your ways. Yes. You have to give up your desires in life. And you have to set all that to the side and please only Christ with your life. And think about all the souls that, that you will come across in this world. Amen. Think about all the broken people in addiction. If Jesus has delivered you from addiction, if Jesus has delivered you from a sin, think about all the people that you could reach through Christ. Amen. All the people that you could use your testimony, your heart, to pull out his love and share with other people in this world. And it is about it is about going fishing and catching fish, but it's the main point that we want to miss here, we're going fishing because we're trying to draw people to Christ. Amen. And we do when we when we want to draw people to Christ, we want to have a good day of fishing. Right. But we go set with the attitude of I can catch all the fish myself, you're gonna find out that you're not gonna catch anything because you don't have Christ. Christ is your only way here today, is your only hope and is the only peace that you will receive on this earth. And think about this. So I want to read 11 one more time. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. 
What do you think what it means to worry for a soup? It means that they surrendered their life and they gave Jesus all and they left their material things behind and walked and followed Jesus Christ. Now I want to ask you something here today. I know things are very important. We have to have material things. We need to have material uh, things to, to help us in this world that we live in. But don't ever put that material thing over Christ. Don't let it affect your relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't let it come between you and Him and build a bridge or, or build a wall between you and Him. Because if you lust over material things, and you will find that you will put that over Jesus Christ. Right. It's like somebody will go and buy a new fishing boat. Maybe they work six days a week, and the only time they can use that brand new boat is on Sunday morning, amen? So then they find themselves putting that boat and putting that fishing and putting that life before church, the fellowship, and before Him. And that's how easy we can get entangled in things in our lives. And I'm not saying a boat's not a bad thing to have because I love boats too. But I got to learn to balance that in the middle of Christ and along with my church family and my life living for Christ. You have to balance things out. And sometimes you might say, well, Jamie, I hear what y'all are doing. How in the world you balance it out? I don't. Jesus Christ does. He gives me the strength to continue to serve him. I don't give myself the strength. My wife said one day we were doing the uh, giveaway at Lewisburg. We were running, 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 running. You're about hitting shoals with each other. We couldn't even stop to hardly take a breath. But do you know that the Lord has blessed me and my wife for giving our lives to him? Amen. The days that you are tired and you want to give up, then you get to work next week and you get a raise. Amen. Amen. You get home and you start seeing your marriage getting back together and your kids growing up. You start seeing things smooth out in your life. That stress disappears. That depression fades away. Because we have to put him number one. And that's how you see your blessings through Christ is when you learn how to be obedient to him. And you surrender your life. And you cast all the stuff that you was holding on to. You drop it down. And you look at Jesus and you say, here's my life. Not just a little bit of it, but here's my whole life. I'm giving my whole life to you to do and to work in your will. That's when you see the blessings of Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. Amen. You know, a lot of people said the cross was free for salvation, but the cross cost Jesus Christ his life. Not our life, but it kept our life from being bounded in hell for eternity. God's grace, his wonderful grace, amen, that he saw fit for his people to have a savior, to send his son to the cross to Calvary and to give his life and be a sacrifice and to pay the ransom in full for you and I. I can tell y'all a lot of things here today. I can change the whole demeanor up here and I can make you feel this tall. I can make you feel this low. But I'm just a mortal man. I can't do nothing. Amen. But the Spirit of God can change anybody. Amen. If you're willing to be changed here today. If there's anybody here today, usually if you have a group this big, chances are it's one or two, maybe three or four. Only God knows this, not Jamie. Amen. That your heart needs to be given to Christ. And only he can save you here today. Not the person sitting beside you, not the preacher, not anybody in this world. But he can lead you. He can give you guidance. He can save your life here today. A lot of people will put their life off. A lot of people will say, well, Jamie, you don't know the things I've done last night. You don't know what I did in my past or last year. I'm a terrible person. The Lord would not want me. That's probably what somebody is saying today, maybe watching, maybe here. Maybe the devil has you bound it here today and bind it to where you can't even feel the love of Christ anymore. Maybe it's, maybe it's uh, born again Christians here that's sick, amen, and they need a, a spiritual awakening in their life. Maybe you just need to ask Christ, look, I failed. I let you down. 
I had a setback and a sin. But Lord, I know that you still love me. But Lord, I want to pull myself out of that sin. And I want to give that sin to you. And I want to have a new walk with you. Amen? Amen. I want to follow you. I want to live for you. I don't want the sin pulling me down from the body of Christ. Amen. I don't want this sin destroying my life again. I don't want to be talked about again. I want to be free. I want to be uh, cut loose from that sin. And I want to live my life for you. Amen. Look, let me tell you all something. This world will tell you that your sin is the worst one of any. This world will shove you to the side and sweep you in a hole and laugh at you and say that you are no good. But that's a lie from Satan here today. See, Satan wants his people to fall, to slip up and try to break that testimony that you had. But you know, we ought to, we ought to at least, at least if we do fall, honor Christ and get back up and repent and turn away. The worst thing we can do is stay in that sin and live our life the way we want to and bring reproach on God. God doesn't want his people to do that. God wants his people to trust him, to be obedient to him, to love him, and to shine their light in this dying world. Praise God. I got a few things right here I'll go through, and this is just going to counteract and give you a few uh, comments. I ran y'all to seeing all these pages turning and said, man, I ain't going to get you to Western Sills until 2 o'clock. <laughs> but you know what? God is good. Amen. amen. Dude, you wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be here. Amen. The topic of this message today I wrote down, Jesus can give us an abundance. Amen. amen. But the first one right here says, and this is going to kind of category uh, 1 through 12 in different sections. But it says the Lord used Peter's boat as a pulpit, pulpit, and we talked about that, from which to teach the multitude. Amen? Amen. Just think about this lesson that, that Jesus is getting ready to set up with Simon and use this boat and to be able to teach the multitude. Amen? Amen. Who is the multitude? It's just like all of us in God's house today. Maybe Jesus is trying not to use Jamie but trying to use the scripture to teach you the multitude. Maybe he is trying to teach you something that you've been ignoring. But it says, if we yield all our property and possessions to the Savior, amen? amen. If we would yield all the stuff, I'm not saying give up material things. I know where your mind's going. I'm not saying give up your material things and sit like a frog on a log. I'm not saying that. But yield those things that come before Christ. Anything that's holding you back from being a better Christian. Anything that's holding you back that you have taken possession over. That, that, that you are in love with something more than you are going to church or following Christ. You need to set those things aside. And when you follow Christ, you're going to see that you no longer need all those things to make you happy. Because he is your happiness right here in your heart. He, Jesus, told Peter exactly where to find plenty of fish. Don't y'all agree with that? Yeah. Jesus knows what our tomorrow is. You may not know it, but Jesus knows all. And he is not going to lead you in the wrong direction. He is leading you to a place to where he can use you, and he knows that he can give you abundance. Well, what is abundance? It might not be a million or billion dollars, but it's a it's a lifelong love. Amen. 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 Yes. A, a lifelong peace to know that this is not your this is not your home. This is That's your right. temporary home. That's right. That he has gone and made many mansions for you. And that he has built you a new home in heaven. Amen. And we have to get through this world. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And under the guidance and leadership of Jesus Christ. Amen. And depend on God for everything that we ask and, and get in this world. Yeah, that's right. See, when we learn to surrender our material possessions and surrender our life, that means that we are wholeheartedly trusting in Jesus Christ like Simon trusted him to go through that net in the deep. What if Simon had said, oh, no, 
I'm so tired, I'm going back, I'm going to take me a nap. You can talk to the rest of the multitude. You wouldn't even hear his name in the Bible. But he was obedient to Christ and he understood that command and he knew he had to obey it. He may have questioned it a little bit like, oh goodness, Jesus, I don't know what's wrong with him today, but he knows it ain't no fish I just left out. But Jesus does know it's fish. Like he knows things in your life. And maybe you're trying to doubt what Jesus is telling you. But he is saying, go. Go anyway. Do what I say. Do what I say and you will see that I'm telling you the truth. Man, what a wonderful scripture that is today. Amen. After Peter and the others had toiled all night without success, our Lord knows where the fish are running. Through an experienced fisherman himself, which is Peter, accepted advice from a carpenter. Amen? Amen. I want you to think about that. A carpenter is telling you where to go catch the fish. That's, told, that's two totally different areas, right? A carpenter builds things with his hands out of crafts, out of wood. A fisherman goes and uses his hands to cast net to get fish to use whatever they use to catch fish. It's two different things. So I guess in, this is what it's saying is Jesus as a carpenter, he is coming to you and asking you to do something. Shouldn't you do it? Amen. Amen. Shouldn't you put your trust in him? But he's more than a carpenter. I can't leave it at that. He's our Savior here today. Amen. He's our almighty Savior here today. Amen. He has paid the price for your Amen. life, for my life. But the most beautiful thing out of all it is, it says right here, at your word, I will let down the net. Other words, Simon or Peter. Simon is saying, at your word, I will trust in you. When it says let down your net, that means that I will trust in you. I will surrender. Master, I will do what you say. I will trust you because I believe in you. This shows the value of humility, of teachability, and of implicit obedience. Amen? It was in deep water that the nets were filled to the breaking point. The opposite place. Amen. They would they done shoved the boats up on the shore. And see, I, I, I visualize what this is saying here today. You have to get off the shore and sometimes get in the deep to do what Jesus wants you to do. Mm-hmm. Other words, you need to get off the land and get up to your knees in water and feel Jesus' purpose. Other words, don't get comfortable on the safe zone. You go over here where Christ wants you to go, whether you're scared or not, and you you fill out his purpose and do what he wants in your life. And he will show you what your purpose is if you're willing to be obedient. That's a hard word here today for a lot of people, even myself. It's the word obedient because we don't want to change our lifestyle here today. We don't want to get out of that comfort zone and do something different. Jesus wants us to get out of that little circle we're standing in and go to work for him. To go be fishermen of men. And I'm not going to forget the women. You need to be a fisherman of women. Amen. Amen. To go out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it says right here, so we must quit hugging the shore. And launch out our full surrendered tight faith in its deep waters. You think about all the souls. In, I mean, you think about deep waters. Jesus even wants his people to come out of his house and, and walk in this big world. To cast the net of Jesus Christ over all these lost souls and drag them in. And let Jesus Christ clean them up. Let his work be done in their life. Man, can y'all understand what I'm saying today? Amen. Do, you, do you need to watch TV more or read the newspaper more or be on Facebook and see the hurt and pain in our world? We need a mighty spiritual awakening in our world. We need a God 
God awakening in our world. Amen. Our people in the world need to turn back to God. Amen. And God needs to be put back in our schools so that our kids can learn about Jesus Christ. The Word of God needs to be put back in our court system, in our jail system, so people can see where the power lies. It's not in the jail. It's not on the street being homeless. It's not being rich and everything you want. But it's the power of Jesus Christ. It's been all about Him. Amen? I think about this world has gotten divided. I think about churches, how churches has gotten divided. Just like a little hallway going down the middle, divided. One crew sits on one side, the other sits on the other. One lives one life, one lives the other life. One argues about that side, one argues about that side. But where do you draw the line down the middle? Who agrees on anything? But don't you know here today that if the world can't get along, whether you black or white, whether you of color, don't you think the world needs to come together for Jesus Christ? Amen. The world needs a change. And it ain't the government. It ain't the people beside you. It's Jesus Christ. And we need to get back to trusting in Him. Because I'm going to tell you something today. I don't care who you are. If I'm a child of God, it doesn't make no difference if I'm white. It doesn't make any difference if I'm black. I'm a child of God, amen, and I should love you equally. It shouldn't be no line drawn in the middle. God loves every soul in this world. God has given everybody salvation who's willing to receive it, amen. It don't make no difference if you're rich, poor, addicted to drugs, uh, strung out on alcohol, or lost in sin. Jesus Christ has the way to bring you to him. But it's your choice here today. I'm going to tell you what I do. I love all my brothers and sisters in this world because I serve Christ here today. And people see how you you serve, like Brother Green said this morning. I need to say this again since we on this. That's why I believe the Holy Spirit has changed some stuff up here because we need to be changed. We need to have an understanding. Don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about what this person says or that one says. You worry about what Christ wants you to do. And Christ will never lead us wrong. That's why this world needs Jesus Christ. So we can see the right reason. And see what our purpose is here on this earth is for. And it's to love one another. To care about one another. Amen. And I'm going to tell the truth up here. Because the blood's on my hands. I'm not going to sit home and pray. And then hide what I pray for up here. Because I truly believe our, our world need, needs a, a course on love. I'm talking about our whole world needs a course on how to love one another. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And if you truly get Jesus Christ deep in your heart, you're going to see that you can love. Amen. You're going to see the true meaning of what love is. Right. Amen? Amen? Let's close in prayer and thank you all so much. We love you. Amen. Dear Father God, Lord, as I've been preaching, I've been worried about my brother on the back row, Lord, is, chest is hurting and it's like a pulling up here Lord and I know that you can handle and deliver and fix all things because you're the mighty physician Lord I pray as his departure from here Lord that you will you will make that chest stop hurting that Lord you will give him a good night's rest tonight and and just heal him Lord and however he needs to be healed Lord that's for everybody in here heal us Lord with that loving power Lord, come over this congregation like no other and teach us. Give us the willingness to want to stay in your word and learn your word and share it with the world. Lord, be with every brother and sister as we leave this door, Lord, that you will protect them this week. But Lord, also put a humbling spot on their body that where they want to humble themselves and surrender their material things and follow you. Lord, we all know what it means to follow you. And that's to be obedient to you and, and, and counter-react in your will and let your will be done in our life. 
Lord, and I thank you and I praise you. And Lord, we just ask all these things in Jesus Christ. And we all say it. Amen. Amen. We're going to do all the call up here. I like to do all the calls. We always have. We've done two of them. Because I always feel like the presence of every church service. You're bringing the stress. You're bringing your work. You're bringing your home life. You're bringing everything into God's house and it's binding you. So I want to have an opportunity for us to truly open our minds and come up here and give our hearts to Jesus Christ. If you're saved, that's great. But if you're not, and I pray the power of God will strike your heart right now and, and bring you that conviction that you need to call upon Jesus Christ. I can't do it for you. This is a choice you have to make. I'm going to say the sinner's prayer before we do this altar call. And if you're here today, I can't lead, I, I can lead you to Christ, but I can't make you. Amen. That's the job from you on that decision and the power of God to change your life. Okay. So I'm going to say that sin, a short sinner's prayer. And if you want to say it, you just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I admit today that I am a sinner. Lord, but I also know that you sent your son Jesus to the cross. And I know, Jesus, you died on that cross. You were buried, but you also rose on the third day to give me everlasting life forever. Lord, and I'm asking you with everything I've got. Lord, I'm giving you my life, whether it's good or bad, Lord. And I ask you to come in my heart and save me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that here today, I pray that you would get with me. And I've been telling people this for a long time, and I ring your start saying, well, you got to put the show where it's at. I, I, I want to do a baptism. It's starting to get warm. I'm, if you're here today, I haven't forgot about you. But when you don't, have a baptism pit it's kind of hard and you have to ball one or go find somewhere so it's getting warm and we're going to set this up so we can get people baptized that has given their life to christ Amen. it ain't only giving your life to christ but but then you have to pronounce it and just show the world that you have accepted jesus christ then you have to get discipled by the word of god Get in a good christ Center church and learn the word of God. If you don't have a home, we would love to have you here. We don't believe in taking nobody from their church home. But if you don't have a home, we would love to have you here. Yeah. Dear Father God, Lord, we just thank you so much for the hearts that you have prepared for this message. Lord, we thank you for giving me the message, Lord, to present it and to do the best I can with it. Lord, we just ask during this time of worship, Lord, and praise that, that you would pull on their heart, Lord, and, and just bring them up here, Lord, and just give their troubles to you, or maybe their heart, or maybe somebody here today that has walked away from you needs to come back to you. I pray that all that will be done. Lord, be with all the sickness in our world. Be with the hate in our world. Be with our leaders. Be with our, our service members. Lord, and just be with anybody who keeps us safe, Lord, and and, and enables us to lay down and protect our houses at night. Lord, and just thank you, and we praise you, and we ask all this in Jesus' name, and everybody say it. Amen. Amen.